sigma and pi bonds. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at sigma and pi bonds and how they are formed by overlapping atomic orbitals, especially the overlapping of a hybrid orbitals. Our goals for this video will be to extend our discussion of sigma and pi bonds to include hybridization concepts, identify which orbitals are used to form bonds, and have a better way of understanding what this looks like. This slide should look familiar. You saw it before, but we're going to expand on it in this video. We have two types of bonds with names based on their symmetry. There's the sigma symmetry, which has the symmetry that goes along the bond axis. So for the CH bond, it would be here. And for the CC bond, it would be here. These bonds are freely rotatable. So long as there isn't a pi bond, that's causing it to not be. So the carbon-hydrogen bonds here would be freely rotatable. Pi bonds are named due to their symmetry, which includes a plane that goes along the internuclear axis. So it is symmetric across this plane, or just symmetric across this plane. Because p orbitals have two lobes, the lobes must overlap. This then locks the rotation. So that double and triple bonds are not rotatable. Let's look at C2H4 again. I want you to pause the video here, and I want you to draw it on your own first, then come back. All right, here is the Lewis structure for C2H4. We know that there must be a double bond because without the double bond, we can't give every atom an octet. You might also remember from your tips and tricks slides that carbon typically has four bonds due to that being how you get an octet with a formal charge of zero for carbon. Now take a moment and pause if you need to, to determine the hybridization on each carbon atom. In both cases, carbon has three bonded atoms and no lone pairs. This means that it needs to have three hybrid orbitals, which leaves us with sp2 hybridization for both of the carbon atoms. These hybrid orbitals are what the atoms will use to form their sigma bonds. Remember that a bond is formed by overlapping orbitals, so it will also need an orbital from the H atom. Now what orbital does H have available to bond with? It just has the s orbital. This tells us that each of the HC bonds we see here will be formed by overlapping the hydrogen's s orbital and the carbon's sp2 orbital. The carbon-carbon bond will be formed by the sp2 overlap from one carbon with the sp2 overlapping with the other carbon. Now let's take a moment to think about something else. If we use the s orbital and two of the p orbitals from carbon to form the sp2 orbital, what orbital does carbon have left over? It has the p orbital left over. That p orbital, one from each carbon, is what is used to form the pi bond. And that looks like what we have here. The C2H4 shown here is a representation of what a double bond looks like in a molecule. Notice how the first bond formed between the atoms are a sigma bond due to the shape that it makes. The second bond, as we'll see shortly, and the third are pi bonds. Because they are formed by overlapping a p orbital side on side, which just gives us this pi-shaped orbital. While in in many ways, we have already gone over everything in this slide. I want to ask it in the way that we will typically ask it on assessments rather than just me explaining it as I did previously. So please pause the video here and try to answer each of these questions before moving on. This will also serve as a good self-assessment for if you understood what we talked about before. Bonus if you cover up the pictures that I have here and do it from scratch. Once you've done that, come back and I'll show you the answers. All right, hydrogen will be using its s orbital to form the bond, and that's true of all four hydrogens. Carbon will be using its sp2 orbital to form the bond with hydrogen. 
will also be using its sp2 orbital to form the carbon-carbon bond. And this is true for both of the carbons. For the pi bond, the carbon is going to use its leftover p orbital. Now let's move on to something with a triple bond. Here we have C2H2. Triple bonds are very similar to double bonds. Take a moment and test yourself. Draw the C2H2 and see if you can do the process that we did for C2H4 for this one. Come back and hit play when you're ready to hear the discussion. For C2H2, the Lewis structure looks like this. The carbons here are the same, so we'll just discuss one and we'll know that the other is the same. The carbon is bonded to two atoms, a hydrogen and a carbon. This means that we'll need two hybrid orbitals, so it is sp hybridized. This leaves two orbitals left over with which to form the pi bonds. And we can see that here. The carbon is forming a sigma bond with the hydrogen using the carbon's sp orbital and the hydrogen's s. And the same thing is happening over here. This carbon is forming a sigma bond with this hydrogen. And then over here, we have the triple bond and one of the bonds is being formed by the sp-sp overlap of the two carbons. Then the pi bond is being formed by the side-on-side -side overlap of the p orbital here, and then the other leftover p orbital here with the green. So the purple is one pi bond and the green is another pi bond. Let's do a quick review of everything. However many unhybridized orbitals initially present is how many hybrid orbitals that you are going to make. Hybrid orbitals are a combination of the atomic orbitals and they belong to the atom. They're still atomic orbitals. Hybrid orbitals overlap with each other to form bonds or with S and P orbitals, of course, as well. Each atom can have its own different hybridization type within a molecule. So we'll look at an example of that in a moment. Sigma bonds are made from hybrid orbitals in hybridized atoms. So sigma bonds can also be made from S and P orbitals if those aren't hybridized. Pi bonds are made from the leftover P orbitals in hybrid atoms or just the P orbitals in unhybridized atoms. Let's do some more examples now to practice. Draw CH3 CHO. And for the central atoms, name the hybridization and think about what orbitals it will bond to the other atoms with. Pause the video and do what we did for our previous examples for this one. Come back when you need help or when you're all done and you want to check your answer. All right, let's draw the Lewis structure. The carbons are our two central atoms. The CH3 shows us that there is a CH3 group on one side and the CH O group shows us the second group around the second carbon. This gives us the following structure. Please ensure that you're practicing doing this fully as discussed in our Lewis structure videos, including counting electrons and determining formal charges. But let's focus on the hybridization and bonding. The carbon on the left is bonded to four other atoms, and so we need to start with four unhybridized orbitals to get four hybridized orbitals. This gives us sp3 for the left carbon. For the right carbon, it's only bonded to three other atoms, so we need to start with three unhybridized orbitals to get three hybrid orbitals. Therefore, for the C on the right, it is sp2 hybridized. Now, if you were stuck here, pause again and take a minute to picture what all of these bonds will be formed with and what it looks like. Even if you can't draw, attempt to picture what it looks like in your head. Pause and come back when you're ready. Here is what it would look like. Now let's talk through each question. What orbital does H use to bond with? This could be true of all of the H's that we have, so I, we only really need to do it for one, but it would be true of any of the H's that we look at. All it has available to it to bond with is an s orbital. 
Now let's look at the C over here. This is the one that is sp3 hybridized. And so it's going to form all of its sigma bonds with sp3. That'll include both the bond to the hydrogen as well as the bond to the other carbon. Now this carbon is sp2 hybridized. So this carbon is going to contribute an sp2 orbital to this carbon-carbon si sigma bond. So this carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed by an sp2 overlap from here and an sp3 overlapped from here. Now, what orbital does carbon use to form its bond with oxygen? For this, carbon is doing a sigma bond with its sp2 orbital, and it's doing the pi bond with its p orbital. All right? So we've walked through all of the bonds here, and this is how I would ask it on an assessment. The oxygen's a little tricky here because it isn't bound to more than one atom. And so technically we don't need to invoke hybridization to explain it. So there's actually two equally correct answers for the oxygen. One would be to say that it forms both of its sigma and its pi bonds with the open p orbitals. So you could say oxygen uses its p orbitals for both the sigma and the pi bond. What I have drawn here is also okay, which is to represent it as an sp2 hybridized atom and say that it uses its sp2 hybridized or er, orbital to form the sigma bond and its p orbital to form the pi bond. Either one is okay. So in summary, we've now extended our discussion of sigma and pi bonds to include the hybridization concepts. That allowed us to talk about exactly which orbitals are forming the different bonds, both the sigma bonds and the pi bonds. We have a better understanding of what this looks like as well. We walked back through those pictures to see how the different hybrid orbitals on the p orbitals formed these different shapes. I highly recommend that you find molecules, any molecules, and walk through what we did with the CH3CHO. Try to picture what's happening with all the orbitals. I'm not gonna make you draw these, but you may have to identify the different orbitals based on a picture that we draw for you.